Welcome back to 30 Day Slim Photoshop. This is day 27, filters. My name is Ben Gribbin, and in today's lesson, we're going to look at how filters are used and also how they affect our images. So, first off, what are filters? Well, it's a good question. We're going to show you on this house that we made in our previous lesson. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to the filter menu. We're going to look at a couple of the filter options and also the filter gallery. So let's just remove the, the colouring changes we made to the document. We're going to just do a quick demonstration of some of the, the basic sort of tools and filters that you can get. So we're just going to roughly, and I mean roughly, select the house using the, the freeform lasso tool. Just selecting its kind of rough outline, any objects connected to it. We're going to show you first blur, which is something that you're going to want to use probably quite a bit. So we'll select the layer we want to change, go to filter and go to blur. If one of the filters has three dots next to it, i.e. a continuing uh, periods, then it means it's going to have extra settings that you need to work on, whereas these ones here just are click and it'll do it. So we're just going to go on Gaussian blur. This is sort of the go-to blur for adding in things like depth of field and just blurring out backgrounds so we can actually change now you see the blur of the background we can in effect separate the house a little bit from its background here we could do then a history brush on the bottom here just to bring these back into sharpness so we can affect we can create kind of full depth of field uh, which is really interesting effect to be able to do so that worked pretty well so that's what filters are really they just are literally filters you can apply over your image to create all kinds of different effects and appearance and we're going to look at a couple more of the blur ones now because there are some more blurs that are going to prove very useful motion blur this is something you're probably going to use in particularly if you're working with moving objects it helps blur in the background so if we wanted to make it look like our house was moving, we could apply blur to the background like so. Um, we could do some more work on the house as well. And you can see it's making the house or at least the camera appear as though that is moving. We can do filters to certain areas of an image and we can repeat it by going to filter and just clicking on this option here. So this now kind of looks like the house is shaking or moving about just using two filters there and also we've got the ability to do a radial blur which is a kind of spinning blur so let me just turn that on this would make your house look as though it's spinning around in some sort of manner that's quite an extreme effect and you'll notice because it's distorting and pulling the image it's actually started to make it transparent at the top because we've run out of things to be able to blur so let's just do a little less strong radial blur. So let's turn that down. This doesn't have a preview on it, so it is a little bit sometimes of uh, kind of just experiment, see what happens. So that's radial blur. You can use that on circles and wheels. Another feature of the radial blur is if you change this one setting here from spin to zoom, it then zooms the blur. So that now appears as though the background or the house is being drawn into focus so just some interesting effects you can get from blur in particular there's loads and loads of filters and we don't have unfortunately we don't have time to cover them all but let's have a look at pixelate which is one of my favorite ones and particularly mosaic this is the sort of effect you see when they blur out people's faces or car registration plates on TV programs and stuff that's the sort of effect you get. You can also create kind of four 8-bit computer graphic images with it. It's quite an interesting effect. If we were to do it to the whole of our image, it kind of makes the house just look like we've made it on a really old school uh, graphics editor. So that's an interesting effect. You can do pixelation. There's actual loads of different types of pixelation. You can do pointillize. And it's just a matter of playing around, seeing what happens and and just changing the effects and exper experimenting with them. Something else that's quite useful, particularly if you're working with older images and you want to 
blurring or fading parts you can go to noise and add noise it's all kinds of different options here you can add dust and scratches you can blur you can soften out the image you can do all kinds of stuff really add pretend damage you can add noise like just go into noise add noise and setting the amount of noise you want to add you can create a sort of old school photograph we can make sure it's more uniform or as a kind of blurred pattern you can set it to black and white if we were applying this to a layer above we could fade it in and out we can also use um, a filter called render and this is used quite a lot in as sort of the base for creating computer graphics creating clouds in particular is the start of many options uh, and many effects if you were to create clouds it just makes the two foreground colors uh, the foreground color and the background color into a cloud effect which you could then go to blur and do like a radial blur on just do a spin just very quickly and you can see we're starting to make some really cool and extreme effects and then finally the filter gallery is kind of different to filters because in effect it combines a group of filters to make certain effects so let's just zoom out this is our preview here and we've got six different groups of filters we can apply we can make sort of pretend colored pencil drawings it's using our foreground color here we can do cutouts so these are like collages we can do all kinds of stuff using this tool uh, it's very handy it's quite fun to play around with so experiment play around with it see what you can create there's so many different styles and options here that will probably keep you entertained for quite a while so just play around see what you can find there's some effects that you think well I've probably never used that but you would be quite surprised uh, and some of these are really good just for creating faux paintings and drawings and pe pastel paintings all kinds of stuff really different really interesting there's literally about two or three dozen so check them out see what you can do with them there's lots of different ones and you'll be able to create a lot of different effects however if you wanted to apply filters to your image but still be able to edit the image without losing it basically you're going to want to make your object into a smart object so let's do that we've just created a smart object we've already discussed how to do that if you go to filter and now when we apply any of these let's do a filter gallery so let's turn it into a pretend drawing or a very dark drawing let's just do it like this change the spray length change the radius something like that press ok then when we go on to edit the image in our original smart object you see it's ok but it will apply effects to any changes we make to this document so let's say we've done that we're going to save that go back you can see it's added in those effects so that's quite useful for being able to edit blurs and just being able to change the strength of the filter and effects you've applied you can actually turn down the opacity just by double clicking on it you can change the actual filter itself so it's quite handy and very very useful once you've had a bit of a play around with it so what have we learned in today's lesson well we've considered basic filters and we've also looked at the filter gallery and your task for this lesson is to experiment with different styles and filters on an image of your choice. Next time on 30 Days to Learn Photoshop, we'll be looking at a combination of tools, the dodge, burn, sponge and smudge tools. Thanks for listening.